Hi there, Ronnie Wink here. Today I'm going to be talking about a cooperative learning structure called Jot Thoughts. I used this in my classroom quite a bit. My students really enjoyed this structure. It's a structure that can be used with a group of students, not partners. The purpose of this is to brainstorm ideas, share prior knowledge, or review content. It helps students to consider alternate ideas and thoughts and allows students to appreciate one another's thinking. So why would you use Jot Thoughts? When you want your students to share their thinking without repeating ideas and work cooperatively to come up with a collection of thoughts, this is your structure. With this structure, you get 100% engagement. 100% at any given moment, all your students are participating either by writing an idea, listening to an idea, or sharing their idea aloud. This structure also models and teaches so many social skills embedded right into the structure. Turn taking, active listening, patience, honoring and building on one another's ideas, and working together. Let's watch Jot Thoughts in action. This is one of our spotlight teachers, Megan Brown, utilizing Jot Thoughts in her fifth grade classroom. Okay. So, Jot Thoughts to refresh. Our essential question this week is what motivates you to accomplish a goal? So you're gonna think, don't say anything out loud, you're gonna think right now of words that come to mind when you think about accomplishing a goal. It could be a goal in school, it could be a personal goal, any goal. So just think about what words come to mind when you think about accomplishing a goal. When you have at least four words in your brain, give me a thumbs up. These could be things you do that help you accomplish a goal. These could be maybe things you've already done. Maybe there's goals you've already accomplished, right? And this could be with sports. It could be with a subject in school. It could just be something at home in your personal life. So while you're thinking, let me remind you the rules of Jot Thoughts, okay? So you're working together as a team but you cannot duplicate a word. So when you have a word in mind and you're gonna to go to write it on your sticky note, you need to shout it out to the rest of the table, make sure they hear you, then write your word on your sticky note and stick it in the center. Okay, you have to make sure everyone hears you because we don't want to have duplicate words. Does that make sense? Are you gonna shout out all four words that you have in your brain at one time? No. no, each word as you go to write it. Does this make sense? Okay, I'll give you another minute to think. Okay, go. As you can see from Megan's classroom, 100% of her students were engaged. Quick teacher tip, if every student has a different colored sticky note, you can quickly tell who is participating in the Jot Thoughts activity. To introduce Jot Thoughts, you can ask your students what the difference is between jotting something down and writing something down. Ask students if jotting something or writing something is the same or different. 
tell your students that when we are thinking of ideas or brainstorming so many ideas, it's often a good idea to jot down all your ideas quickly so you don't forget them. Those ideas are important so you can analyze them, sort them, and use the information. I always tell my students we are better together. More brains are better than one. So lean on your group to get everyone's ideas and then organize the information for your own use. So how does Jot Thoughts work? The first thing you'll do is announce a topic that is open-ended where there can be multiple responses. You will provide think time, which is so valuable for students to be able to process information, just like you saw in Megan's classroom. You'll then announce a time limit. If you're using Jot Thoughts for brainstorming, 30 to 60 seconds is appropriate. If using Jot Thoughts with a prompt that requires higher level thinking, you may provide two to three minutes. It would depend on the grade level and the abilities of your students. You will then have a signal for your students to begin. They should write their ideas down on a piece of sticky note first. Then the student will announce their idea aloud as they place it in the middle of the table or on a group brainstorming sheet that is in the middle of the table. It is a good idea for the primary grades to use the group brainstorming sheet to help the students organize their thoughts on the paper. Anyone can start and anyone can share next, but only one person can speak at a time. Students must listen to each other as they place their thoughts on the collective brainstorming list because there can be no repeats. Their goal is to cover the table without overlapping. This validates and gives credibility to all the students' responses. The final piece of the structure is what's called the debrief. The debrief is the part where you can scaffold for your learners. This is where we bring in the higher level thinking skills. Students can sort the thoughts according to a rule, value, or importance, and can be used in follow-up lessons, whether it's writing, math applications, phonics skills, reading comprehension, so much more. The teacher can simply say, looking at all of your post-it notes, what do you notice? Groups could share or groupings or a particularly interesting answer to the prompt. It could be more specific, such as asking students to sort the notes into categories. Let's take a look at how Megan's students are going to debrief this Jot Thoughts activity. Okay, so you're gonna take turns with the sticky notes. Each person can pick up one and read the word. Okay, and we're gonna make like a Venn diagram or a double bubble in the middle of your desk. If the word pertains to only a school goal, you'll put it on one side of the table. If the word pertains to only a personal goal, you'll put it on the other side of the table. And if the word could be for both school or personal, then you're going to keep it in the middle. Got it? Thumbs up? Okay, go ahead. Those students were working together to sort their ideas into a Venn diagram or a double bubble. The other awesome thing about Jot Thoughts is that you can use it at any point in a lesson to provide process time and note taking assistance for the students. Before a lesson, you can introduce you can use Jot Thoughts to introduce new material or activate prior knowledge, assess what students already know, or assist with planning instruction. During the lesson, you might stop and do a quick Jot Thoughts activity to provide opportunities for students to make sense of the material, check for understanding, or provide time for students to create a written summary statement of auditory material. After a lesson, Jot Thoughts can be used to provide closure, check for understanding, and clarify misunderstandings. It can be used to clarify key ideas or critical pieces of information and to allow students to make connections to material or to make personal connections. Jot thoughts can be used in every grade level, even in sports. This football team at T.C. Williams High School in the state of Virginia. The Titans had had a successful football season, but in an effort to be more inclusive and have a family style atmosphere, the coach of the football team decided to use cooperative structures to build community and cooperation so that everyone could be the star, not just the quarterback. He decided to use Jot Thoughts to have the football players explain plays and ideas for improvement. This is a true story and an inspiration to begin using Jot Thoughts in your own classroom. 
Jot thoughts can even be done digitally in the classroom or for virtual learning. The teacher can create a Jamboard to ass and assign pages to students to collectively brainstorm in groups. Or the Nearpod Collaboration Board can be used for a Jot Thoughts activity. If you would like to read more about Jot Thoughts, be sure to check out the Spotlight blog posts. Put the term Jot Thoughts in the search bar and read how our Spotlight teachers use Jot Thoughts in their, in their classrooms. To access the blog, you would go to Symbaloo. You would then click on the Curriculum and Instruction button. Scroll down right. Click on the Spotlight blog. And down in the search bar, you would type in Jot Thoughts. And all of the blog posts with Jot Thoughts would be listed here. If you have any questions about Jot Thoughts, please reach out to me. Or if you would like me to connect with you to co plan a lesson with Jot Thoughts or demo a Jot Thought lessons in your classroom, feel free just to give me an email. I can help you implement this strategy in your classroom to increase engagement with the goal to increase students' achievement. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning about Jot Thoughts. See you next time.